Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Day trip here in Caddis Island, Toms River, New Jersey, and I bumped into some folks that have a really cool shuttle conversion, and they're going to give us a tour today, and I think they're on this other side. Hello, John and Ina. How's it going? Welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures, and your beautiful dog. Zaddy. Hi. <laughs> Abby. So tell us a little bit about your shuttle conversion here. This is a uh, 2004 E150. Uh, it's 22 foot long and about 10 foot tall. Um, we picked it up in South Jersey. It was an elderly uh, transport shuttle. shuttle. Um, it was, came with all the seats and everything and we stripped it out and uh, rebuilt it. It actually just finished getting a, getting a fresh paint job. Yeah, big blue. It's a uh, 22 foot too, so about eight foot wide. Sometimes it's a little uh, tough, and but it fits in any standard parking spot as long as we have somewhere to hang over. Yeah. This one's deceiving because this is a bus parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, you wanna <laughs> come on inside? I got electrical doors. Um. Okay. So here is the passenger seat. Um, it's homemade. Just tear the cushion off and fold it back up and it just stays up and here's just a normal um seat belt that we took from a junkyard yeah and before you get inside there's just like super easy magnet screen that you just go through to keep the bug up, bugs out and yeah that's abby's bed she sits there while we drive and uh a new passenger driver's seat that we also got from a junkyard yeah we got the passenger uh, driver's seat from a uh Mercury minivan in Florida for $25 because our other seat was horrible. Yeah. And then, um, That's really nice. yeah, pretty comfy. Our, um, we have an FEVER solar setup. It's uh, 30 amp because we have 300 watts of solar on the roof, the flexible panels. And then we have four deep, uh, sorry, four batteries, two deep cycle and two AGM. It's about 450 amp hours, and I wanted the deep cycle so I could charge them off the uh, engine. With the, I feel a little safer with that amp load, and then also you can jump the motor in case the batteries ever die, which is which we super did nice. yeah, in we Mexico. Did, we did do that. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, this is our bathroom wall on the outside. They're a tongue and groove that we just got from Lowe's, and uh, our bathroom is super simple. It's a homemade compostable toilet, and uh, a primitive shower, I'd say. But it's hot water. It's hot water. So that's really nice. Yeah. Um, I yeah. fiberglass the plywood that we just made the walls with. And there's a drain over there. We just hang up a shower curtain when we want to shower inside. Um, but most of the time, it's really convenient to just do a quick outdoor shower uh, out the window. But it's relatively small. <laughs> but it works. Yeah. And, and we... wait, should we see the storage too? Yeah. There's plenty of storage in that big empty hole that goes like all the way around to the front. Yeah, we use that for all our uh, toiletries, towels, and all that. And also our circuit board is back there, but I put up um, like a faux wall to surround it so nothing could touch the circuits. And then we have our 12-volt uh, pump that is in the bathroom right by the toilet. And we get three, about three and a half gallons out of it per minute. And uh, the whole fiberglass in the floor is that's, sorry. The whole, all the walls and the floor are fiberglass, and Nina did that, so it's watertight. And we put up that shower curtain when we shower. Yeah. Um, and also with the walls, we um, I saw online someone did it. It's uh, just a uh, half inch wall, a little, little bit less, and it slips in a half inch aluminum channel, so that way you don't have to stud it out and lose all that space. And then right above the bathroom, we have, not above the bathroom, but just outside the door, we have a max air fan, then the, the two uh, two directional one, because we want to be able to pump air or out, in or out. And uh, So it and, goes out when we cook and goes in when we want to yeah. be a little cool. And then we have all recessed LED lighting that's on dimmers. And then we dim them. Yeah. Woo. And then here's our little closet with the same half inch channels. And we just used plywood for this wall because we didn't care that much, but we, for the the kitchen one we did the nicer wall it's the same as this here and the closet was actually built out around the inverter which is underneath it's a 3000 watt energizer it's a pure sign 
and you can actually run a circular saw off it, which is pretty nice. And I spaced it out to give it enough room because I wasn't sure how much it had to breathe for heat. And it happened that these bins we found fit in it just perfectly, just by chance. And then also, I started expanding our battery bank and one of each of the deep cycles are behind the baskets. Behind each one. Yeah. Because we started off with 220 amp hours about, but I was just paranoid even though we never used the full 220, but you only get 110 out of it. And uh, so I just wanted to feel a little more comfortable and it's not bother. Now we can have lights on at yeah. night. Not, bo not bother Ina about like waking up and looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's the kitchen. Yeah. You want to do the kitchen, Ina? This uh, is our sink. We got uh, running water, hot and cold. Um, so that's really nice. But our sink basket, whatever sink basin, is just uh, a salad bowl. Um, but that's convenient because then we just use the leftover water for our dishes. And this is our cutting board, just completely homemade. It doesn't really fit because it's a circle. Um, here's our seasoning, olive oil, and dish uh, wash supply. Dish for doing dishes. A lot of mason jars. People usually ask us if they make a sound or noise when we drive, and they do because uh, it's glass, but I have this twine around every other um, so they don't make that much noise then. And it's, you know, aesthetically. And we just have one of these overhead uh, um, cabinets because we got it off of Facebook Marketplace. It was a used uh, kitchen, so we only got one of them, so we didn't have to know what else to do with the other space. Um, there's lights here for cooking, really convenient at night. Um, a little tea rack. Um, what we got here, we got um, plates and cups. This is a full countertop and we decided to stall the gas stove halfway in our journey. But it's convenient because you can just assemble the stove or assemble the countertop. And there we go, ready to cook. But we can also get our counter space back, which is nice. Um, and this runs on gas, so John installed um, cement board, is it? Around the whole thing to make it heat resistant or fireproof. Uh, we got silverware in this drawer. Uh, pantry stuff in these cabinets, they're empty because um, we don't live in the bus at the moment. This is our hot water heater that also runs on propane. Uh, Camp Chef, the same brand as the oven, it works really well, and we mostly just use the hot water for our hot showers. Which we prop the door open and let it vent out the ceiling. Yeah, because literally there's flames <laughs> in yeah. on that. Um, yeah, and here's a little um, trash and recycling area, yeah. and there's some pots, room for pots up there as well. And we like to keep our trash bag small because it's hard to, so that's one of the hardest things, the two hardest things that we found when we were on the road is um, throwing out your garbage and getting clean water to fill up your tanks. Yeah, <laughs> so we empty it often. So with the little one, quantity. you can just toss them in any like, municipal bin, but if you, a lot of people go with like the regular home ones size. and then there's nowhere to throw them. And we also don't have room for the home size anyway. Yeah. It would take up a lot of kitchen space. Mm -hmm. So that's silverware and under here with the dogs laying comfortably is our kickboard. So we took it out and there's plenty of room for shoes. That's where we store all our shoes. We store all our shoes, winter boots and summer sandals. The floors? Look? Yeah, the floors we got from uh, Habitat for Humanity for like 15 bucks. Yeah, leftover. And floors. um yeah, it's just pergo flooring, but underneath we have an inch and a half of um, that blue foam board insulation from Lowe's, and uh, a subfloor. Yeah, right? there's, yeah, there's, and so, yeah, so there's that, and then there's plywood, and then there's the uh, pergo, and um, and then also at the kitchen, this is just uh, plywood, and in a butcher block stained it, so that way it's safe for food, and then with a little backsplash that's uh, mounted onto a two by four that I trimmed. And it's yeah. just one inch tiles, which... This is a two by four, yeah. and the inner tiles are two by two. Yeah. Um, and if we didn't have that here, everything would just fall down. Sometimes I play stuff on this little tile wall, and stuff still falls down. Yeah. It's a little difficult to catch them afterwards. Um, this is our garage door, we like to call it. Abby, get up. Get up, girl. And it's just like a hat, kind of. Uh, it's our dining table that we can easily install at, in the couch and make like a dinette area. 
Um, but we usually have a lot of pantry food here. Yeah. Surf gear, surf our bike in the back. Winter gear. Camping uh, gear. Generator. We have a toolbox. Yeah, lots of tools. We can fit a lot of stuff in here. Because since we built it ourselves, sometimes some things get a little yeah. need, <laughs> need to be repaired. <laughs> but there's a, like the oven we actually installed because it used way. to be up on their shelves over here. It used to be up on top of the fridge because it was a last minute purchase because my toaster oven I was going to bring with us lit on fire in my house. So um, the wiring's just been the all same night. week we yeah. left, and um, so I installed the oven actually uh, in a neighborhood in Malibu. I was just running the uh, circular saw off the inverter to yeah. make everything fit. with all the tools that you brought. <laughs> um, this is our bang, yeah. queen size. It's a standard queen size memory foam bed, and actually Ina found the uh, frame that we put it in in the garbage, so we didn't have to buy the. Yeah, it's just like Kia yeah, well, queen size frame. Yeah, it's a Kia queen size frame, mm -hmm. so we didn't have to buy that, which was nice, and we got to reuse it. And then uh, I had a bunch of copper piping in my house, so we just we decided to use that for our curtain rods. And, and I, uh, I made blackout curtains on all the it's, uh, all of them, all the windows, and there's homemade nightstand slash yeah. shelves for stuff. And it's uh, the curtains are three layers. There's a black layer in between to help the light from not going in or out. And it also helps with a little bit of the heat. Yeah. When we were in insulation, kind when, of. When we were in San Diego, we'd actually before we go to some bars, we'd close the curtains and put the lights down, dimmed low, and we, I would always go outside once in a while and check and make sure like you couldn't tell people were hanging out inside of it. Had a little pee party. Yeah. And then here's uh, shelving for. There's normally another bin, but we don't know where it is right now. Um, we keep our like socks and underwear and stuff up here. And then Ina keeps her all her jeans and jackets down here and like an extra blanket is a shelf. Oh, and, the and actually down in this hole, which you might not be able to see really, but down deep in there, that's where we put our laundry. Because people don't bag. think about how they need a spot for their laundry a lot of the time. The laundry in the garbage, people seem to forget. And then we have a little uh, 12 volt um, sockets and two USB ports so we can charge our phones and we actually have a, it's not with us right now, uh, we have a fan that we can mount here. It's a styrofoam, uh, not styrofoam, um, Velcro here. So we can mount a fan for, so if it's hot when we're sleeping, we can do that. And then Ina made screens, all these windows open. And she made screens so we can keep the windows open at night even if there's bugs. That's also Velcro, right? And then I also made this little shelf here. Um, we were in the, we were along uh, what was the name of that mountain? By St. George in Utah. And it's some sort of like really hard wood and we were burning it. And I just thought it looked nice so I used a circular saw and cut it and made a little shelf. And then the we course. have the surfboards up here. Uh, the, the whole, a lot of the build is really around the surfboards. I was looking at RVs and everything like that but there's no way to get longboards in those. And we really need those. We normally have three here. So I built the fridge construction specifically to store surfboards and they'd be out of the way and they don't bother us and they're safe and not outside in the elements. And then these are the old uh, handicap doors. There used to be a lift there and um, yeah, we open them up while we're uh, let, like hanging out sometimes. We'll um, catch sunrise and sunset. Like this? Yeah. And they can also access the garage. And that's also our, our main garage access. Yeah. And then Ina's bookshelf that she loves so much. <laughs> and I made myself. Yeah, Ina made the bookshelf with uh, some scraps from the walls and from um, a lot of things we actually, the table we got uh, for the couch that goes our little dining area is from Habitat for Humanity. We bought a whole bedroom set and reused the wood for building everything because it was only $10 instead of buying all the wood and there's little bits of it all around the bus. Our fridge is a um, 5.1 cubic foot um, deep freezer, but it has a brewer's kit, and uh, so it can we can regulate the temperature and adjust it, but it does run on 110, which some people don't like so much, but it's for the brewer's kit and the fridge, it was um, like nothing. $200, yeah. but we were figured we were better off buying a couple batteries instead of buying one of those 12 volt fridges that's like $800 and fits a third as Because what you can see, <laughs> it's so much volume in here. Yeah. It's empty, so it's very, yeah. fit a lot of stuff. And um, yeah, this is just our broomstick that we fit here on the side. You want to turn the light on? 
and John is still light here as well because it okay. gets dark a little bit. This is our fruit basket, um, more pantry stuff, a lot of pans here, and this is also another fruit basket. Usually there's even more pans. Yeah. Um, so this is pretty much our whole, a lot of kitchen storage right here. Um, and then actually, yeah. since it's, I wanted it to be flush with the uh, bench and everything, I store a lot of my tools and like extra... Behind. Yeah, like pancake mix and such. <laughs> <laughs> Costco supply. And yeah, this is our uh, bench slash another storage area. Um, it lifts up just like this. Um, it's a little heavy, but there's a lot of room here as well. Super dirty. <laughs> and it, at the end there, it's our propane tank. Which that is, you wired around the whole bus. It's currently off right now because we're not traveling, but um, I used uh, door um, like closing material, then this would normally be over here. Weather strips. Yeah, weather stripping, and uh, we ratchet strap it down to keep it airtight, and it's actually, you can see right in the corner, it's ported out the floor because propane's heavier than air, so it sinks. So you need to have a place for it to go away in case like a vent. it starts leaking. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of, uh, like, our sheets and stores we don't access as much here like extra beverages and John installed uh, another pair of seatbelts yeah. this is a third alternative uh, as a passenger so you can just easily sit here and uh, be safe hmm. on the road so it's really convenient you like to sit here a lot when I drive yeah that's where I sit yeah and this <laughs> is our five or six inch memory foam just like kind of like the bed and I just uh, sewed this um, couch cushion yeah. and matching passenger seat cushion so it's not really comfortable and, at the end of the day. Yeah. And that one cushion there is actually the seat for the passenger seat. That's yeah, this is the passenger you seat. You make that piece of plywood comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, just like decor elements, I guess, uh, the driftwood. Yeah. It's because uh, we're named the Seaward Shuttle. We drove from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific and down to the yeah, Down to the Baja. Tip of Baja, yeah. So we've been a lot near the ocean and, yeah. um, and we got that element too, the, yeah. the barometer. Barometer yeah. from a junkyard. And we used rope. Um, normally this would be, it's gotten loose over the 20,000 miles we put on it this winter. <laughs> um, but we used rope on a lot of the portions because it would be Trips. really hard to match the curves. You'd be bending wood constantly, which wouldn't be fun. And then here is my closet. It's also empty right now because we're back at the house until it's sold. Um, but it's huge. I store all my... They, that, it's huge. Actually, Eno takes up some of my closet too. Uh, um, uh -huh. And then in here is the original uh, circuit board. And I mean, this was all just for the heater and the lift and the air conditioner, which we took out because you'd have to idle the motor all the time. So there's all that. And then, like, yeah. <laughs> we have, um, we started off with 137,000 miles on it, and now we have 158. It's got the uh, Triton V10. They are known to sometimes throw spark plugs, but we didn't have that issue. Um, and we get like 10 or 12 miles to the gallon, depending. I mean, if, if normally if we're driving and we're just traveling, we only do 55 because we're not in a rush. But it's got a 55 gallon tank, so we get like 500, 600 miles to a drive. Where we met some people and they had um, one of those Toyota RVs and they could only go like 200 miles on their tank, which was... But we, we physically can do 80 miles an hour. Yeah, we, we did that at one point. Yeah, we were doing like 80, 85 for a bit the, and we were in a rush. The mileage is less than 12. Yeah. Well. And Ina, what were, what were you saying that you want to call it? This is the big blue. Nice. Because it's gigantic and <laughs> it's just one blue bus. Yeah. And uh, we just painted it recently, we remained the stripes that's on most of the original shuttle buses, like yeah. a lot of shuttle buses have has these stripes. And this is actually our water fill here, we just put a um, uh, 45 okay. degree joint it's on it, and we, that's how we fill our water tanks, because we have a 25 gallon water tank back there, underneath, and that's what supplies all our fresh water. And then on the other I used um, air conditioning brackets to uh, suspend it, and then just ratchet strapped it over, because those air conditioning brackets handle I think three or four hundred pounds and it was really hard to find a way to mount it and on the other side we have 15 gallons for uh, gray water and we also carry normally an extra like 10 or 12 gallons in 
uh, jugs. jugs just in case because we also had a time when the water froze because we were like 15 degrees so we like to have a reserve inside but you can fill up the water tank with yeah. jugs as well yes. yeah, we, so we fill with the jugs we can too. just refill it yeah. Too. And then actually we ripped our exhaust off at one point because it used to go out the other way <laughs> and uh, there was a, a, a dirt road in Mexico that just uh, went straight down and then curved straight back up and we bottomed out and ripped it. Was the also super rusty it was super rusty and fragile. Yeah. And oh. then here's our garage door access and we keep our bikes and it's all like we normally have more tools in here too like shovels and stuff. and. Um, we were having a little bit of airflow coming in, so we just grate foamed around the bottom <laughs> of the door, so she doesn't look so good. But you can see our inch and a half of uh, foam, and we just kept the plywood in the garage because we didn't care that much about that. And uh, we built the bed to fit the bikes underneath of it because they can just slip right in. And the bed turned out to be the perfect height because you can also sit in the bed yeah. rather comfortably yeah. with headspace. And so it's perfect. Uh, the, our have, truck box. Yeah, we have a truck box on the back because I like to be a little over prepared. <laughs> um, More stuff. Yeah, so this was all, uh, it's probably empty right now actually. Yeah. This so was, yeah, we, we put uh, like six gallons of gas in here, all our oils, our um, couple extra tools, plumbing supplies, and we would also our put hammocks in, and ropes for the hammocks. Yeah, we put ropes in here, all our ratchet straps, toe straps, just anything like utilitarian because I didn't want gas inside and I was having trouble finding a spot to mount an uh, extra gas tank. And we just threw both of that into the metal framing. And then... Um, and then we have uh, your hooks here, the soft oh, yeah. metal hooks for our hammock There's like attachments. four on the other side. We, um, we always carried an extra set with us. Uh, like uh, at least have, like four of them because we would I'd mount them into other people's buses for them if we would be parked next to each other and we could sling up between us. Yeah. Because sometimes there's not a tree to be parked near. And here <laughs> you can see uh, the Velcro that we just simply stick the the mesh or the bug screen yeah. on the windows when we need it. But we can't drive with it. I'm sure that it'll fall off. And then also this window, the exact window on the other side and the back window are all emergency exits. So if it's really hot somewhere, we normally will just pop them open. And we had a nice breeze through and it was actually really useful all the time. And here's where the outdoor shower comes out if you want to be taking a shower. Um, is the pump hot? Yeah. Okay, so there's the... <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's our gray water tank. And that's tank. our gray water tank. And then our second battery bank, which is the two AGMs. I love this used to be the AC front. That's what we're yeah. looking at, but we took that out. Oh, and then that's our, um, that's how we, we uh, in the back there, that's how we um, empty. empty our gray water tank. But, uh, yeah. The, uh, the only, the, the, the worst thing about the bus, I think, is probably it's a little rough riding because it's, it's such a heavy light. duty suspension and we're super light, so we get a little bounce around. But what's the best thing? Yeah, that's probably our, I have to say, that's probably our biggest thing about it, right? Yeah, but you have to do the good stuff. Yes. And yeah, we that. can travel. Yes. We can travel. Um, we bought the bus for 4000 and most of the money was in the electric um, with the solar panels and the batteries and everything. I probably would have done a couple things differently. I like the, the flexible panels, but I found out there's much cheaper solid panels because I was looking and they were about the same. And someone told me there's a 355 watt for 120 where I was over 300 so all said and done, the whole thing is just a little bit under four thousand dollars, and we've had to buy pretty m most everything for but, the bus. But all the stuff you're saying that our expenses, it's just material. Yes. Because we did everything ourselves, yes. so that obviously saved a lot, and we bought a lot of used stuff from like marketplaces and flea markets and yeah. Habitat for Humanity. Um, so it could be worse, but we're happy with what we got for the money. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, most people don't have a vehicle buy for eight thousand dollars and go twenty thousand miles without any issues yeah the only issues we had was we ran over a lot of nails because we're mostly <laughs> dirt roads and i plugged them a couple of times but i had to replace one because it had a separated tire and by the, and then there was another one that i plugged and it got another hole in it right next to the original hole and they're like we can't plug this is too close and then at so that we point yeah, we got a four for three deal because yeah. So we're going to need tires, but yeah. no, nothing else that we needed to replace. Yeah. Cool. Our viewers are going to want to 
No, because they might be researching building one themselves. Uh, did you actively seek out and look for a shuttle bus like this? Yes, I'm, well, I, I was all over the place. Ina thinks I'm a little crazy. We, um, uh, we looked at vans, they are usually more expensive. Yes. We looked at school buses because they're nice. A lot of people have them, but we're two tall people. Yeah. So you would be a little bit You would have been fine. I'm 6'2", and um, we went on a lot of tours of other people's buses when we were at Schooly Palooza. But um, I, I'd be in someone's bus for five minutes, and after five minutes, I couldn't. Well, you have to walk with I, your hand. I'd like walk this. like this, and my neck and my back hurt. So I was looking at these and step vans, and maybe I was considering a city bus because this is six eight inside. I'm six two. It's nice to have some headroom, and it also makes it seem so much bigger inside when there's actually something above your head. And this is also what two inch wider than a school bus. This is eight. Yeah, this is wider than a school bus, so we get a lot more room instead yeah. of six or six and a half. Yeah, they're probably like seven. What was yeah. the biggest challenge once you started doing the conversion uh, that was, was unexpected that you had to overcome? Huh? Unexpected. I was going to say the biggest challenge is to settle on like a floor plan, a plan, <laughs> and like stick with it. And we changed our minds a couple times, yeah. like with the oven. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know what the biggest challenge would have been. I think just uh, picking a floor plan was tough. tiny challenges all the way. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. And then what about insurance? How did you obtain insurance for this? What well, I was really uh, picky about what I was buying, and this one was actually registered as a van, so it's still registered as a van. And my insurance is only fifty dollars a month because I just carry liability and comprehensive and no collision. So that way, if someone breaks a window, it doesn't cost me anything. But um, but it would have been more insurance if it was registered as a bus. Yeah, so we were just lucky. It would have been annoying was, to register it as a bus. Yeah, we were lucky <laughs> that it was pre-registered. Especially as a van. in New Jersey. And we got Geico. Yeah, we got Geico. Is there certain roads that you cannot go on? Is there a certain license you would have needed if you if it was registered as a bus? Um, oh, I don't know. I didn't really uh, have to end up looking into it. I was going to do the whole register it in Vermont thing, yeah. and then to have them like take a couple pictures, and then be like, oh, you send them your title, and then they send it back, and then it's an RV. Yeah, it's not registered as an RV. Yeah, there's no. a lot of regulations yeah, was, on that. Yeah, red tape in New Jersey is not fun. So, <laughs> so what's next in your adventures? I heard you say you're selling a house, and then yeah. after that, you're hitting the road again. Yeah, we're probably gonna hit the road again. I um, I just have to finish up uh, the work this season, and because uh, we travel in the winter yes. when you have some job in the summer. Yes. So obviously it's the summer, so yeah. you're back working, but maybe we'll travel next season. Yeah, but I, I wasn't using my house that much, so I figured I'd build this and then travel in it in the winter and stay in it in the summer, but I figured if I have a house, I might as well sleep in that while it's still there. For the month yeah. that we're selling it. Yeah. But we'll be back in the bus. Yeah. And maybe next uh, is to build another one. Yeah. Because we really enjoyed it. We did it all ourselves, and it's fun to learn. Uh, and we have a backup camera. We didn't mention that. We have a backing yes. camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's not important. Our viewers are going to wonder how they could find you online, because they might want to follow your journeys. Uh, you had mentioned um, about something about the driftwood before. Is yes, that... <clears throat> we are Seaward Shuttle. Yeah. That's why everything is blue and there's driftwood. And that's uh, a S E A W A R D shuttle. And that's on Instagram? Yeah, it's on Towards Instagram. Yeah. yeah. So I'll include links to your social. That way our Thank viewers you. can follow you. Yeah. And um, do you have a YouTube channel as well? We do not. Okay. No. Well, uh, we're not that good at videos. Yeah. <laughs> the only, actually, one thing I would suggest for people if they do buy one of these is before they hit the road, make sure they can get all of the rims off of the uh, lugs because our rears were stuck on when I had to uh, change the tire. And luckily, I had uh, map gas with me. Otherwise, I was would have never been able to get it off. So you want to make sure anything that you might potentially have to repair on the road is accessible. Because that was really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> you made it. Well, John and Ina, thank you very much for taking the time to show our viewers a tour of your beautiful shuttle bus. Thank you. Yes. And it's much I, prettier now with the we just painted it. <laughs> yeah, you'll see on Instagram that it used to be white. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so people might not fam be familiar with the new look yet. Yeah, it's brand new, like a week old. <laughs> right. Yeah, from yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but thank you.
All right, yeah. thank you. Yeah. This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it, and we'll see you soon.